Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio with Space Exploration and Crastorio 2. And we're going to start off with some of the things uh, that Mark has been doing today. So the first thing I, I did touch on this very briefly in the um, in the last ep in the last video, um, but this is this is the this is his system for producing the. Um, Producing delivery cannon capsules down here in a station, and he's now made more than, more of those than he knows what to do with. But this is also bringing in all the raw resources for making delivery cannon capsules, and then making them available to be shipped off to other planets. And that's quite, and as, as I was saying last time, that's quite useful um, if you want to increase the, the thr throughput beyond what can come from just the uh, the core mining, or if you re if you're out there and you realise there's a couple of bits and pieces you just don't simply don't have. So this is probably get, this this could could well be quite useful in the future. But Mark has also been doing lots of other sort of little bits of tidying up on this planet but and solving a lot of the problems that we've been seeing in the past. So while the rest of us have been off jaunting off to exciting new destinations, Mark has been doing important business like increasing the amount of steel plates we're making. So there's more machines in here making, turning the, uh, turning the steel ingots into steel. Hang on, are you steel or are you iron? No, you're iron. <laughs> improving the number of machines, improving the... Ooh, I was going to say improving the amount of steel being made, but we don't seem to have any steel being made, so something has broken here. We seem to have run out of, um, nope, this, this, this unloading system here is broken, because there's, like, 17,000 in each of these warehouses, and it's not, there's not being accepted by this one for some reason. Um, I wonder if that's a, what's, what's good? Why? 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 Why, why, are these, why are these stopped? So, what, what's the rules behind these? So, if, if there's less than 24,000, then they should be enabled. If there's less than 24,000 in here, I can promise you that. Um, so, why are you, why are you disabled then? So, if anything is less than 24, ah, it's because it's completely empty. So, because this is completely empty, um, these things are set. There's no, there's no signal. <laughs> so, there's no signals on. Right, so circuit networks can carry lots and lots of different signals. You can put on, you can put on iron, you can put on copper, you can put on every, absolutely every single thing in the entire game. So if we look in here, you, you've got all of these, you've got these signals, you've got every, every single thing can be put on the network. And so, if you say anything, what an anything actually means, or over here you've got some wildcards, you've got everything. If all signals that actually have some sort of signal... Um, are there, then they'll then this will trigger. Or if anything, anything, if there's any of them, uh, have a signal there. So if we look at somewhere where there's an actual signal on a cave on, that we can actually read, and that there are, like here, for example, you can see over here on the right-hand side it says we have 79,000 iron ore, but it doesn't say we have zero copper ore. So that is just that's not on there. It doesn't count zeros for the signals. But if I go in here and specifically tell this to be iron ore, like that. Then that'll start to flow, and then there will be, and then suddenly, as soon as there's any in here, this then counts as having some, so it is therefore less than less than uh, 24,000. So all of the other belts start running as well. Now, as you can see, all the other belts are running a bit slower. So this one's trying, so this one is running. This one's running flat out. These ones are these ones are jerking and stopping and starting because when this is empty, these don't run. But when this is not empty, they do. So yeah, that's a problem. If I copy, but if I copy this over to all of these, then all of them will now run at full speed. We've got a bit more iron flowing through. This will this will be a fix for the system. So yeah, so the using using everything as a condition in here is great and means you don't have to it means you don't have to reprogram the the um the belts if you if you have a cop for a copper station or for a coal station or for an anything else station you can just have the, uh, the the loading and unloading system for the warehouse will work absolutely fine no matter what you're putting in and what's coming out of it however if the warehouse runs out and empties the system can't bootstrap itself and start running again so that's an interesting problem we'll have to um we'll have we'll have to be be aware of that one in the future because that is uh, that that is Un unfortunate when it uh, when it fails like that. You can also actually we could fix this if we get, if we come in here with now with some more uh, more red cables and we go um, across here and across here and then we set these ones to be enabled when iron ore is greater than um, 100 say. Uh, then we've got 1.5k in here. Why is that? What? Enabled when iron ore, or actually enabled when anything, we should start using anything here. En enabled when anything is greater than a thousand, sure. So then copy that one to there, 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 and there. So it's because I didn't know the difference between greater than and less than. So this system will now work forever um, because we are monitoring what's in here. So we'll only put it, we'll only load this warehouse up if there's less than 
24,000 in it and will only unload it if there's more than 1,000. So it will never it will never end up empty and will always get a nice balance going out on all of these belts. Not that, that really matters for this particular case. Um, yes, so... <laughs> That's, I mean, that will, will, that will fix this problem. Um, I assume that the maximum, yeah, the limit on this was to make sure that these didn't all, these didn't output in, um, unevenly. Um, so, but, 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 but when, it didn't take into account when this empties completely. So that's now sorted. It's now twice as complicated. It's got a lot more circuit conditions it needs to worry about. But this now, as you can see, is keeping this at a thousand, and therefore the system is not breaking down. So there's a uh, there's a possible fix for that. Okay, so there, there we, we've gone in and we've gone in and fixed Mark's fix. <laughs> Sorry, Mark, but yes, this now means we sh he, apparently he has yeah made more steel plates from steel ingots. So this this is presumably this is this is steel. This has been extended to have more machines in here making the plates. Therefore, we can get more of them flowing into this into the station over here because we didn't have enough steel previously. So it's gonna it's gonna help a lot with that. He's also put in a co in the Kovarex system. I, I talked about this last time as being a thing we were going to need. Uh, so over here, you can see we're dropping off the... Uh, well, we, we would be dropping off the um, uranium ore if there was any. Uh, oh, speak of the devil. Here here comes some uranium. That's that's some good timing because now I can sort of talk through how the system works. So as before, that gets unlo gets unloaded here. We dumped into the into the, um, into the middle warehouse. Now, there isn't a balancer on here, but um, that probably isn't going to be too much of an issue because really because of the rate we're getting through it there's only one belt coming out of here so even if it gets unbalanced we probably don't care very much uh, this is then being fed around it's being centrifuged out and then the, the centrifuges as you're probably aware from all of your factorio playing um, will spit out mostly uranium 238 and a little bit of uranium 235 the spicy uranium um, in this because we are playing uh, Crastorio, it also kicks out iron ore and stone which then need to be dealt with down here so we've got iron ore and stone stone stations to take that away at a higher priority the, uh, the, the uranium that's kicked out of here is then passed down... How does this work? Passed down here. Okay, so we're taking this... Ah, okay. No. This is... Suspicious. What's... So it's all coming down here. We're taking out the... Oh, okay. Oh, I, I, I see. I see. Yeah, we're taking out the dull uranium this way. We're taking out the... the and then the stone and the spicy uranium will carry on down this way. And, and, and so on and so on and so on. Because for Kovarex... You need an input of dull uranium, so that's coming up this way like this. Um, there, it comes along here. That's fed along the middle. It goes into the into centrifuge. Now, in um, in uh, in in vanilla, the Kovarex enrichment process will spit out some of the 238 it uses. So you need to deal with that as well. But in this one, actually, for once, it's a little bit simpler. So because this system just takes in, it takes in the two uh, both types of uranium, and sp but only spits out hot uranium. Um, we can then have this system here, which is quite, which I think is, is really quite neat. When this finishes. Uh, so they've got ages to go. I've got ages to go. Are any of these going to actually finish any time in the near future? Probably not. Um, this one is going to be the first one to finish. So when this finishes, it'll pour out all of this. All of the um, hot uranium will come out this way, the two, three, five, and it will pass straight through this in, uh, through this inserter. Uh, I'm sorry, the splitter, and be passed straight back into the machine over here like that. And so that means we've just got a, st a steady flow just going round and round and round. Now eventually you'll get to the point that these ones are at over here where there is enough uranium that this is backed up this is backed up all the way to the splitter because in here eventually you can only hold 100 apparently 128 uranium in your um, in, inside the centrifuge before it starts to go no nope, I'm full I can't take any more so when this this no, so when this next runs it will spit out 31 uranium but it will only take in 30 so there'll be one extra one that will go that won't be able to go into onto this belt here so instead that'll come out this way around here drop down the belts here Go all the way around here, and then go into the uh, into the train system over. What? Oh yeah, yeah, along here, and then drop into the into the warehouses here. So we now actually have a supply of um, of spicy uranium being made, and we have about uh, 30, 1400 of it. So that's that's the the, the wonder, wonders of Kovarex. It takes in lots of you. It basically takes it turns three of your dull uraniums into one uh, hot uranium and two stone, allowing you to then boost up. Enrich your enrich your supply of uranium and make make sure you actually have some of the uh, some of the two three five available for for all the things in the future that require it. And we are going to require a fair amount of this because um, whilst we're not using nuclear power at the moment, which tends to be your uh, your main draw on um, on on two three five, we are using we are doing uh, various nuclear based sciences up in space. So we're pulling we're going to need to be pulling in a fair amount of uranium uh, uranium two three five specifically in order to in order to make that. And yeah, we've got a large system up here that will run. And when the whole thing is, is running flat out, which it seems to be at the moment, you get a reasonable amount of the 238 flowing in, and it'll come along here, and, and most of the centrifuges will run. 
so yeah this is going quite nicely and we just we kept as you can see bloop. and every so often a centrifuge will finish the um the, the all, all the um two three five will pour out stop it straight back into it and eventually gradually these are filling up i'm not sure why they're filling up from this end first that's a little counterintuitive from what i'd expect um i'd expect them to be filling up from this end and then slowly filling up the next ones along and along and along but i think mark must have gone in and done a bit of sort of manual priming to get everything up and running a bit more nicely so uh yes this is this is now basically working it's it's, uh, it's it's passing through we need to we'll need to wait a little while for all of these to fill up to get to the point where where these ones as i say they have the 128 uranium 238 in these have 117 so they've still got a bit of filling up to do but eventually they will all have enough uranium 238 in that each time they run one uranium will drop out at the end here and and, and we will have a good supply of it coming through so that's that looks really good um it's it's a it's, I really like this uh, this system with the um, with it just passing it straight out the top and back into the next one with the uh, with the loaders. That looks really good. I've ne I've never seen that before because this is the first time I've um, I've done a Coverex or I've been in a game where a Coverex system has been done with loaders. That's a really nice idea. Mark has of course been dealing with other shortages down on the planet, so there's another stone, another another stone mine. Uh, goodness knows where I. <laughs> uh, he says he's opened another. St Maybe it's that one. I'm not. I am honestly not sure. No, I think that one was already there. I don't know. He's built. He's, he's built another home, a stone mine apparently, uh, and some more uh, stone smelters and more trains to transport the stuff around. Because apparently we had a shortage of steel bricks. So let's have a look and see if we still have a shortage of steel bricks. We probably won't because you know he's gone in and fixed it. Where's the smeltery? Here is the smeltery. There we go. It took a bit of finding. Um, so now we have presumably we have a, a suitable supply of stone. Yeah, we have lots and lots of stone. Well, there's a gap in the stone being unloaded there, but but. There was six. There's enough of a buffer in this warehouse that it didn't actually stop. So yeah, I'd say it looks like we have just about enough stone being brought in. There's lots of it being made into stone bricks, which is then all pouring down here. There's two-way flow of stone here, which is a bit weird, but we'll look into that in a moment to try and find out what on earth's going on there. But that's producing stone bricks at a rate. We've got 19,000 in each warehouse, so there's about 80,000 stone bricks plus the train train load here. So I'd say yes, that looks like Mark has thoroughly solved the stone brick problem. Now, why is, this, why is there stone flowing in both directions? What is going on here? Oh, it's coming from... Oh, there... Ah, I see. That this is this is probably the extra stone mine he was talking about. So there's a random little stone mine because there was a patch here that he just wanted to... Just wanted to deal with because it was untidy, I imagine. So that's going into here. Flowing down the belts. La, 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 la. Along here. Um, Spaghetti through here a bit. So <laughs> this is ridiculous with the, with the stone flowing in both directions. But I mean, I can I can see why he's doing that. It means because then it all goes back to the, the the one point here where the stone all flows into this into this uh, warehouse, and then we will deal with the stone based on the sort of the priority. So all of these are these down here, like the ones I was talking about before. These are set to only load if there's less than a thousand um, in there. Uh, th ooh, this could also break if we if we completely run out of stone, but that'll never happen because we've got a little bit of it being dribbled in from over here. And and these ones are set to only take it out if there's more than 100 to keep them all balanced as well. So we, yeah, we should, should be okay here. <clears throat> So here we are feeding in this stone supply and these stone supplies as the priority because this one this one comes from core mining and is therefore free as we've discussed or at least you get a certain amount per unit of time and therefore you want to keep using it. This one is where we're just trying to tidy up that stone mine so we want to use that up as a priority. And then after that if there's still any more needed then we'll use what comes out of the um, out, out of the train system. And that's why this is running slowly and jerkily because you can see this is hovering around about a thousand. Um, and so it's just being kept 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 there ne neatly, and then it's flowing out up here to be to be to be bricked, and also out this way, very relatively slowly actually, because it looks like we now probably have well we're making sand up here. The sand sand storage is happy. We're making glass. Glass seems to be backing up a little bit. Um, silicon over here is backed up completely. Yeah, that's great. So all of this seems to be happy. We've got a bit of flow going into here to to sort of to keep this. What's going on? Oh, okay. We've got yellow belts down here, so these these are topping up these warehouses relatively slowly. And we also here have the um, the supply of glass that comes in from other planets that's brought in by delivery cannon, because that's when we, when we have the, all of the overflow of stone from basically everything. It just falls. It's turned into glass, which then just falls magically out of the sky like that, and is passed on into the into the rest of the system. So, yeah, this is all all, all works really nicely, just keeping everything tidy and and, and organised. So yeah, we're doing 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 well there with the stone, I think. Mark says he's also been out. Oh, I, I touched on the steel earlier, but I didn't read all the way through what he's been saying. So apparently he's been doing an expansion out here to make more uh, more steel because he's noticed that the, the rate we're making steel at is insufficient, despite the uh, despite the extra um, machines over here cutting the ingots up. We're still not making quite as much steel as we'd like. I mean, we've got we've got loads of steel ingots down here, but the uh, we are very very short of the um, of, of, of uh, steel steel plates. Now that's I say very very short. We have more than a train load here, and that there's 
well, but, but, but <laughs> not for very long. So that's yeah, that's um, not not going to last. So that's going to take nearly all the steel that's in the in these warehouses. So that's why Mark has then been putting in another steel smeltery over here. He's talking about beaconing it, and I think that would be a very good idea because if we use beacons, then you can put you can essentially have uh, it make. It, you can make things run faster if you want. So you can get you can you can and you can take out the speed modules that are in these machines and replace them with productivity modules. But the main thing is you can then use more expensive productivity modules without feeling bad because you don't need to use as many of them because your your speed is provided by external beacons providing the, the with speed modules in them making everything run a bit faster. So yes, I think I think doing this with a uh, with this with a um, uh, with with beacon design to speed up at least to speed up these two stages would be a very good idea. Um, but that can wait for uh, for another uh, for a future episode. But I think upgrading all of this to use to use beacons at some point would be rather nice. Uh, how far off is the next level of beacon? Let's let's see if we can find those. So at the moment we've got we've got this one. Effect transmission gives you basic beacons, um, and then later on we get compact beacons. Uh, so what's this one? This is this is uh, eight eight mod eight module slots, fifty percent transmission efficiency. So maximum module power of four. You can have compact beacons, which are oh blimey energy four. That's expen That's tricky. Um, they give you ten at hundred. So maximum module plans transmission of ten. Okay. Then there's the wide oh no it's wide area beacon. Oh oh no I'm looking at the looking at the uh, level twos of those. So this one is uh, actually only tier twos of um tier two of energy. So that's not not too far off actually. That means. That's that's within a reasonable level of grasp. What does that get us? That gets us 10, 10 module slots at 75, so you get maximum 7.5, so it's almost twice as good. Or you get the wide area beacon, which does 15 at 50%, so also 7.5, um, but covers a larger area. Hmm. So this covers uh, 14 tiles. This, this one is two tiles okay so these are really really good if you just want to make one or two machines go much much faster or uh, whereas these ones are much better for just covering a large area because whilst they only do 50% transmission efficiency they can hit a lot more than two machines so you get a lot more a lot much larger area of machines so you're getting going to be getting um, a much more useful use of the modules in them um, I actually meant to look at this one uh, but yeah the same, same sort of thing so uh, yeah yes yeah, same sort of thing um, and that only requires energy two science. So we get yeah, those. The, so the question is, is it worth upgrading this system to use basic beacons when we're going to get wide area beacons in? Not soon, if I'm being honest. There's going to be quite a lot of extra development required before we actually have them. But at some point in the future, we are going to get beacons and, and modules, and, 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 and we're going to get wide area beacons, and all of this is going to be significantly better. So maybe basically is basically what I'm going to say for this. Maybe he's done some more tidying up and, and fixing things up as well. So uh, I mentioned last week that um, Mike had produced a larger oil production, uh, sorry, a larger plastic production facility here. So it's bringing in bringing in oil and coal and producing plastic in large quantities. And um, Mark has started putting in delivery cannons for but with with all these production areas by the looks of it. So we're able to now ship out um, plastic to a place if we need to. And presumably this is not programmed yet. Oh no, send to get to Njord. Okay. Uh, ah, so Tristan actually needed oh yeah, Tristan needed plastic for making his um, uh, what do you call them? It's uh, making his ion anion exchange beads, and he needed cryonite. So he decided, obviously decided to ship those in rather than um, rather than making more plastic from on-site oil. So okay, fair enough. He's removed the hazard concrete from around all of these that we that Mark had put down as a suggestion, but we weren't making it, so it wasn't being put down. It was just making this list down here look absolutely ridiculous. Um, and he's removed the plastic production from here and replaced it with a bit more sulfur production because, well, we don't want to have two places producing plastic because this one is more productive, as in, will it's it's got more productivity modules in it, therefore it's more efficient, but not through efficiency modules. So it's more more oil efficient, less power efficient. Um, but it's got yeah, so it's more oil efficient, so that's good. So we wanted that, so we've, we've, we're using this for making plastic now. Uh, sulfur over here is now being made by even more machines, and even more of it being pumped into up here. So we, we now have a plentiful supply of sulfur, so that's good. While I'm down here on Norvis, uh, Tristan has made some improvements to the display, he says, and the display is this thing over here that informs us, basically informs, <clears throat> informs us what we're short of. So we are currently very short of iron ore, even more short of copper ore, but we've got a decent amount of um, steel ingots, iron plates, copper plates, 
Um, we've got uh, some, sorry, iron ingots, steel ingots. We've got, we're very, very short of um, steel plates. Uh, we've got no copper plates, but that's uh, yeah, that's expected. Sorry, it's copper ingots. Say the right words, Lawrence. That does help. We've got, we're very short of copper ingots because we don't have um, a huge amount of those. Ah, so what he's done here is a, a, a sort of a, a, a bit of a flippant suggestion I tossed out last week, where all of the lights are now the correct colour for what's going on. So that must have been a bit more um, interesting to uh, to set up. But let's have a, a quick look as to how he's done that. Ah, that's a bit across the, a bit across the top here. I was looking completely the wrong place. So he's looking at the, at the C level. So, so C is the number of 10,000 or appropriate numbers of these things. So 10,000 for that one. It's probably going to be 5,000 for this one. So, yeah. so he's, he's tweaked it based on stack size and also based on... And then also set the colours up. The colours are then chosen up here, passed down all the way to the entire, entire all the way down the entire to the entire system, um, to tell every, so everything down here is set to go green if there's more than uh, ten on the sea, or to go yellow if there's more than four. So as you can see, we've got an entire stack screen. So it makes it much much nicer to look at at a quick glance. And from this, we can see that we are very short of steel, as we were talking about earlier. We are a little bit short of um, uh, of, of silicon. That's interesting because we seem to have plenty of silicon, so then the station was full. So I think this just never fills up further than a sea level of five. Uh, possibly the same for Vulcan, uh, pyr Pyroflux. Ooh, all the oil just went. I don't know where. Oh, that, maybe that was, that was a train just picking up the oil. That was really good timing. So that, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but that dropped from about here down to about here, probably because a train just took all of the oil. So that's, that's um, yeah, that's working well. I, uh, I I like this system. It looks it looks good. It gives us, it gives you a, a lots of nice information and allows you to just glance it and go, oh yes, I, I see what's going on here. Tristan's also set up the um, processed fuel production, which is here. Uh, I believe this is now supposed to use coal or wood, depending on what the. Oh, I see. Oh, it's got wood coming up here. So yes, if there's if there's a surplus of if there's if there's too much coal, then it'll feed some wood in. As sorry, if there's not enough coal, it'll feed wood in as well because these machines aren't fussy. They'll run off anything they can burn. So it's just pass it's passing wood excess wood through when we've got too much wood and when we haven't or, or perhaps when we haven't got enough coal. When we've got too much wood in, in storage, it will prioritise the wood and pass it up here. Uh, so presumably down here somewhere there will be a thing saying, pass it up here if there's a, a huge amount of it. So here we go, yeah. If there's more than 100 wood in the uh, in the logistics network, then it'll pass it up this way. And apparently this required Tristan to do a little bit of fixing because I'd left a chest of shame somewhere that had a load of wood in it. Um, that wasn't being taken away and put into the logistics network. Now I'm slightly puzzled as to why that caused problems because either it's in the logistics network in which case it would be picked up and put into the system or it's not in which case it would be um, it wouldn't matter for this system. it wouldn't affect this. So I'm slightly puzzled as to why that caused problems. Tristan will probably tell us in the comments but let's see if it was in a red chest it would get claimed and taken to a, a, a green chest over here have we got a green wooden chest? No, we've got a yellow chest. Ah, okay, so it's because it must have ended up in a red chest, or possibly, or, no, it'll probably been in a yellow chest, and the yellow chests were of equal priority, so it just, it, you don't, stuff doesn't get moved from yellow to yellow. So the reason it failed is because this isn't a green chest. All of these should be green chests, really, but never mind. Well, let's not worry about that too much. Or possibly blue chests, actually. No green chests, because they're, they're there to supply players and things as well if they need it. Um, but well done for tracking that down. That must have been um, <laughs> an interesting one to try and find. I'm, I'm curious as to how you, how, how you, uh, how you searched for it. <laughs> I did a little bit of fiddling around with things down here. So I we have these rockets over here that I was talking about last time. So these are dedicated rockets that are intended to go off to specific places. So all the stuff that needs to go to Talos will be put into this rocket. And that means if you're going out there, if there's some if there's a bit of stuff that's needed, then it can be put into that rocket. And then when when anyone goes out there, they know what need what they know what's needed out there for whatever reasons. They don't have to sort of go around asking everyone and re relying on their on their memories. Over here we have the rocket for Taishikuten. <clears throat> so this has now been stocked up with all of the things that are missing on Taishikuten to get everything just finished, brought up to back up to where it should be. And I think if we're with any luck, oh, yeah, it's also got some of the bits and pieces that shouldn't have been brought back in the first place. And maybe no, no, we haven't. I was going to say maybe we've also got the bits and pieces in there to allow us to upgrade the um, the system that's gen dealing with the Immersite slightly. But it looks like that hasn't been put in yet, so that still needs to be done, I think. Um, but we'll. We, we, we can I'll, I'll leave that on the to-do list and we'll get that done in a, in a, in a, in a future stream. <laughs> so I did, a little, yeah, a little bit of tidying up there. That was probably while I was waiting for all of this to load up. And everyone's going, oh, no, don't put in another another demand. But I was saying, no, it's okay. I'm demanding like 200 things in total. I think it'll probably be fine. I did a little bit of patching up on Taishikuten as well while, while I was looking at it. So um, there were a few little tweaks that I realized could could be done. Uh, one is going to be to do something about all this, all this raw rare metal because... 
that, uh, sorry, uh, that's filling up in here because the rare metal just isn't getting shipped out to uh, Norvis as we as discussed. Um, so we obviously maybe we need to make a lot more blue circuits or a lot more lithium or something like that to get rid of it. But I also put in uh, the pipework down here somewhere. Where is it? Maybe I didn't. I thought I. Oh no, no, I didn't. No, I thought about it and did and, and did similar things out on um, on Talos, but I didn't actually. I didn't actually do any of that work on on Tychicus. Never mind. Let's let's let, let's gloss over that. What I did do though was in Norvis orbit. Um, was was get started. Was get the uh, fixed up all of the problems that I'd spotted in the uh, in the um, in the science production over here. So I was putting in a few extra little bits of pipe here and there where the, where I hadn't got the outputs being dealt with, uh, making sure everything's there. So now I'm reasonably confident that when we finally get a supply of holmium through, and I, I say finally just because it's, it's been taking quite a long time, I'm aware it's a very complicated process, so I'm not actually um, I'm not actually casting doubt on Tristan's Factorio abilities, I promise, I'm actually, it's just that it's been a, been a, been a couple of episodes, and so um, yeah, it, it, but, it's, but it's a very, very big job, as I said, so when that starts, when the holmium starts flowing here, we should then get everything we need in order to get the, um, the these purple sciences being made and heading off to be scienced up properly and allow us to make do do some more exciting researches and get trains up and running. Um, so yeah, there's lot there, there was a there was a number of things in here because I'd um, forgotten things. The most complicated of those was that I realised that one of these systems produces contaminated scrap. It's not you. It's not you. It's not you. It must be you. Yes, there we go. This is contaminated scrap coming out over here, unfortunately. And so that means I need meant I need to put in another thing here. So I couldn't just dump it onto the scrap belt that was going away, carry, carries all the scrap away. Because if we send contaminated scrap down to Norvis, um, it's not being processed on Norvis because you need um, uh, you need cosmic water to, to deal with it. And I think it can only be dealt with in space. So we are now passing that contaminated scrap round here, round here, round here, up to here, where it's being washed. It's just going into this system with all the rest of the contaminated scrap that was coming out of the, the rest of this washing system. All of this is, as previously described, very, very temporary, as is the uh, the belt that brings us over here and is dumping the scrap into rockets and shipping that down to Norvis, because in the long run, shipping it down to Norvis is just a waste of rocket fuel, because you're sending it down and then bringing, bringing it back up again um, in the form of metals. You're much better off just uh, processing it up here, but we're not really quite ready for that yet. Um, I suppose I could probably put in a, um, a system going out here that will deal with the scrap and cook it back up into uh, into the ores it's supposed to be, and then ship it back, and then ship the metals back over into here. I just haven't done that yet, um, <clears throat> and also there's going to be a lot of rebuilding and a lot of planning when once we get space trains. So I've been prevaricating a little bit around that one, but uh, we'll get we'll get around to it eventually, and then we'll start dealing with the scrap properly. Because especially in the future, once we once we get onto later, once we get onto doing material sciences, there's going to be no way we can we can we can ship scrap around. It's just not going to be practical. <laughs> it's not gonna happen and that will be about it so that's all all of the stuff I have to talk to you about today I've been organizing the videos slightly differently for series two so in series one I very much did I did uh, the first video of each pair would be what I've been up to and what Tristan has been up to and then the second one would be what uh, Mike and what Mark have been up to um, this time I'm trying to do it a bit more sort of geographically so that's why in the first episode I talked about what had been going on on uh, Talos and Kothar and where is Tristan? Um, I, I'm Njord out here. Um, so yeah, those on Talos, Kothar and Njord. Um, and then in the second episode, I, I talked about what had been going on on Norvis and in Norvis orbit and a little bit of Taisha Kuten as well because there's a little bit of stuff happening there. Um, I think that's probably going to be a more sensible way to do these things because I, I imagine you'd probably, you care more about what's been going on and a coherent story than you do about specifically who's done what. So I'm going to carry on trying to do that but let me know what you think of it either way in, in the comments because it's always nice to have feedback. Um, the videos have been a little bit shorter so far this series but I'm sure that'll extend as we start doing more and more complicated things and have more and more going on. It's just that the building up the um, the infrastructure tends to be a relatively slow process that you can talk about quite quickly. So they'll, yeah, these have been about half an hour each, yes, but, but in the future they'll, they'll get a little bit longer I'm, I'm sure so that's going to be the the end of this episode please come along on monday for, uh, that's tomorrow for the uh, for the next stream when we shall be trying to finish off all of the uh, all of these um systems that, that i've been showing you uh tristan will be hopefully starting to ship out his first holmium i'll be seeing if i can get some beryllium shipped but i i mean it might it'll probably take quite a long time um and the same with uh, mike for the uh, iridium so there's, there's 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 long processes to go through for all of these and i'll talk through them more when they're a bit finished Mark will perhaps be beaconing up the smelteries, and um, I think he wants to get—he wants to start making. Looks like he might want to start making nuclear trains, although that could could just be um, could just be uh, trains that are going to carry stuff around. I'm not <laughs> not a hundred percent certain. Um, oh, here we go. Yes, yeah, so he's got an old coal station he wants to remove. I'm not sure where that is. Uh, 
Oh, the iron, he's noticed the iron ore balance, so that's all right. So the one I was talking about, he has noticed that and will be fixing it next time. Um, there's some prioritization stuff like that. Uh, steel, steel improvement, yes, maybe beacons. Um, there's some, some, some extra core seams on, uh, on, out on Norvis that apparently have been, uh, have been found, but we haven't really claimed yet. So I say claim, we've, we've claimed the area, area around them, like, like this one up here and this one. We, we, we've claimed the territory, but we haven't dropped mine, mining drills onto them yet. So that, need, that should be done. There's one there on the, in, out on the water. Um, in order to get that a little bit more throughput and a little, try to get our our free resources a little bit higher and just try and yeah just try and get that working as as well as possible um he wants to build um at uh, he wants to build um atomic uh, atom bombs that's going to be um interesting he's he see he looks like he's going to have a very very nuclear uh, session where he's building nuclear bombs nuclear trains and nuclear fuel cells so that's going to be a definitely a thing and some new uranium mines to support that <laughs> uh, generally more more mines as well and reconfiguring re reconfiguring the wall out blah, blah, blah. He's going to be making an outpost building and resupply train, apparently, as well, and um, expanding off-world deliveries as, as required. And Tristan has, as, as I said, needs, needs to finish off the Holmium, and there's apparently some more tweaks to do to the display system. Right, so I think that's going to be, uh, as I say, enough for today. Come back tomorrow to see us working on all of this stuff, and uh, hopefully getting, get, making some, making some serious major progress next time because I think we've done a lot of setup and now we can now we can make a big leap forward with all of these materials come back on uh, Wednesday for the Dyson Sphere program stream where maybe I'll be finishing off we shall see how that goes um, and look out for other videos hither and yon as they as they come out as well so thank you very much for watching please check out the channel sponsor that's tree4.be use the code Lawrence plays on checkout for 20% off a, uh, a Minecraft or a Vect Factorio or a seven days to die or and so on and so on um, hosting services um, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.